Hey gang, we have two people this month. We have our friend Carla who has created something really wonderful for your journals and our friend Vicki who is demoed with them. So take it away ladies. <laughs> so um, basically the item that I was making with Vicki, helping Vicki out was um, to make resin corners. Uh, for her journals. And uh, I actually do a lot of resin work. So we went and found on Amazon and a few other places, some molds that look like this. Yeah. That you can use to make little corners. And Vicki will show what they're like on oh. a journal. But <laughs> so hold up the mold again. Is this from, oh, shoot. I think it's from this one. Yeah, so that's the mold. And you know, this camera does not focus like other cameras does. There you go. And there's the right and the left. I just think these are awesome. It's not like the metal ones. I think these, well, for me, these will be more decorative than what is it, utilitarian? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's too big of a word for me. But I think they serve a purpose, right? You know. Yeah. So yeah. what I was thinking about, and these are really long, so I have to change the way the book looks. But I thought that if I had the right size book, that they would add something to the book, like the corners, they would add something to the corners of the book. But I think it would really be lovely if I, when I make another book, I can push them together all four make four and push them together and that would be like a picture frame for right. the cover of the book and then idea. you want to glue something underneath that right and then this would frame it like a photo or something this would frame it so these can be used for more than just corners and then that there's this one which is a honker this one's huge oh yeah that one came from this mold yeah just love it. Now, I will tell you, um, some of the molds are a lot thicker than others. And so I had a few fails when it came to creating some of the resin molds. So this one is uh, quite ornate. And you can see I still have pieces of resin stuck to it, but it's very deep. And so when I created some of the edges, I tried to make them not as thick. Um, but they came out real rough and and not not the quality that I would like to make them. Um, the other thing you'll notice is the differences in color. So I attempted several different techniques to color the um, corners. This one is using a mica powder uh, to make it kind of a luminescent. Uh, like ivory color. Oh, is, uh, it, is it the same as this one? Yeah. Like this? I yeah. love this one. The, the reason I put that in there, I thought it would be really useful for uh, antiquing or yep. adding some yeah. other color that you may like. It was kind of a, a plain color. I also did some where I used some chameleon powder, like this one, it's hard to tell, but it's a chameleon powder um, that a uh, mica chameleon powder and if I can find the right one look it's uh it was a red and green oh I don't have any that look like that in the ones that you saw oh that sounds interesting yeah yeah it was kind of a red and green I thought it might give it more of a metallic look so are those just pavement powders yep these are these are oh. chameleon mica powders is that what these are that I told you I like the the, the gold yes look? they're actually a, a gold and Gold and green and red mixture. Okay. So then I tried using gold um, acrylic paint, and that's what these are. And unfortunately, they did not, they didn't have the gold shiny part that I would have liked them to have. They came out kind of an amber color. No, but that for me, that's okay because it can be painted over right. or it can be antiqued. So right. It doesn't really matter. I mean, if I like the white pearly ones, mm -hmm. but 
I think if you're looking for a kind of the punk thing or antique looking, this would work just as well. Right. And you can like, use these are the same mold, but in different. Yeah. Red one red. is one has got the the pearlescent yes. Michael Mike mica powder. And then the the other one is just acrylic paint. So like when you're okay. making your resin, there's lots of different things that you can use as an additive to create an end result. So you can use um, the acrylic paint, you can use resin dyes, which give you a solid color or sometimes even a translucent color. Yeah, that one's- um, What's this one? Oh, pretty. See, I like that color. That's the it's Celtic good. Knot corner. Yeah, that's a, that's a resin dye. That's lovely. But and, some, uh, and some mica powder. To I kind started of to say it's that it. little sparkles in the back. I can see the sparkles in the back, not so much in the front, well, maybe, yeah. Well, I guess if you have light to look at it with, that's better. It's yeah. a little sparkly, but it's not as sparkly as like this one is. This one's right. really shiny. Right. You, you can see the, the powder if you're up close. You can see it a lot better than in this one. Yep. And but sometimes I like if I don't get the one. color I want using one technique, I might add some from another. So for example, I if I want uh, like a, I might do a mica powder but I may add some dye or some acrylic paint to give it more of a, a of a background color. So what is this one Good again? Idea. That one is a pearlescence powder. As a powder in yeah. the resin. In the resin. You know, I just, not for nothing, but I like it kind of plain. Right. I. Well, and you know, like we, like we had talked, you know, you could uh, do like a dry rub of an yeah. of another paint over it to kind of give it an antique feel or give it another co color to kind of bring out some of the design. Yep. I yeah. just love these things. I, you know, well, the, the other thing that I see is that if you have the molds yep, and you already use them for resin or whatever it is you're using for, they could be used with paper clay. They could be used with your embossing powders. Um, there are any number of things that you can pour into those molds yes. or press into those molds to make this. So think about what you have in your stash. You know, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe you're not a resin person like Carla, but you may have something else that you can use to do this with. Even well, the air dry clay, I think you could press that in and pop them out and paint them however you wanted to. I, the reason this came up for me is because when I make books, my corners take a beating because I use them for a year or more. So I had these metal ones, which are very sharp, and I liked the way they looked. And I thought, well, that would be really cool. And what is that when we went looking for the corner, the, mm -hmm. the corner? The corner molds. And we found the, the little molds, the silicone molds for these. I'm like, oh. Uh, that would not be quite as sharp or abusive to every time I pick them up, mm -hmm. get stabbed at the corners. And I'm trying to save my books. I don't, you know, like I said, like this one, somebody, uh, someone sent me the corners for this and he sent me the corners for this and you just mash them down with the plier. Yet again, they are a little sharp. They're not as attractive as say this would have been. You know, if I done, if you'd done it in black. That'd look really cool in black. It would look, look really nice on the book. And yes, it does save wear and tear. But for me, looking at the resin ones, it's more about aesthetics. This is usage. This is aesthetics. And yeah, it's useful. You know, so that, that's why I like these. Because- well, And you can tailor them to tailor. your book. You can, you yeah, can you get can the mold tailor. that you want. You know, like you were showing the- uh, Celtic knot, well, if you're doing something for a trip for Ireland or something and you want to do a book on that, perfect, right? One here that's got a Celtic knot on it. Yeah. Yeah, and what uh, I like is that I go, hey, I need some that are red or I need some that are black. Yeah, black would be kind of fun to make. We'll have to do that. I, I think that would look really cold and then maybe buff it with a little gold rub and buff. Yeah. Well, and I think the black, if you are dry brushing some of those other metallics and things on it, yeah. would just be gorgeous. Yep. Yeah. And I just think it adds just a, a little, I mean, it elevates your book a little bit. I mean, some people don't care, but you know, when 
I mean, let's see. This book was started on, and I actually dated something, which I could think. I did the first one in here in 429.21. And my corners were starting to fray and the paper was coming undone. I can't tell you how many times I had glued the, the paper on the chipboard in the corners because it's in and out and in and out and up and down, bumping into stuff. Now that the metal's on here, I think that'll help protect them a little bit better. But right here, I don't know, probably can't, but see, it's starting to split the chipboard. And that's from usage. That's just from using it. Now, yeah. these were put on after the book was made, before the holes, after the holes were punched. I would have put two up here, except for it would have constricted the, um, the okay. string here. Mm -hmm. This one, I could have put one on here. But if I did it, it would have been longer. And so I probably would have put these on first before I poked the holes in the cover so I could accommodate the size of these little things. This one was just enough. It missed the string, but the top one is not spaced the same. And it would have covered up part of the string that opens and closes the book. So that's something to think about. But boy, do I like these corners. <laughs> You can also layer them yeah. too. If you wanted to use the metal corner, but make it look nicer, apply the resin one on top. What do you think? You don't think that would bump it up too much? You could also sand down the resin. To Actually, be no, it doesn't. Well, let me use the gold one, although I prefer the white, but let me use this one. <laughs> so Carla, it's the bottom. If, if people don't want to do this themselves, are you going to put some of these in your Etsy store? I sure can. Okay. I sure can. So my Etsy store is What If NC. Um, if you don't see one in there and you're interested, uh, drop me a quick note and I'll respond to you. Well, and if if you really like the journals and you're not into making journals, I happen to know Vicky <laughs> is an expert oh. journal maker, <laughs> and she's got so lovely mini journals too. Her her Etsy store is Etsy Etsy store. Table Studio. <laughs> studio messy table studio so yeah check out these ladies um they do some awesome work they both have youtube uh videos out there and etsy stores that everybody needs to put in their favorite box so thank you so much ladies this has been very enjoyable and i really like what you're doing with those thanks carla <laughs>